Hearts Mitts from My Life Mitts. Thank you so much for stopping by. Today I want to work in my Hobonichi Techo. I have it housed in this natural leather notebook cover by, by uh, the Superior Labor and I just wanted to show you the outside and the inside and how it's looking. I do set this notebook on my desk and it's just open out in the air and I don't uh, store it away after every day, I just leave it out on my desk and so you can definitely see it. You can see the natural leather patina and changing colors. Okay, so I did a video previously, I think a couple of videos back, where I shared with you a, like a real-time journal with me session and I spent about six minutes, five to six minutes journaling and doodling while I chatted with you the reality of the way I journal is that I will work in my journals whenever I have some free time. So in that case, uh, the, the time where I put the camera on, I, I literally only had <laughs> less than 10 minutes before I had to pick up my kids. And I just really wanted to get a journal session out. Usually I would not uh, bother to turn the camera on and getting it all set up with a tripod. I mean, it doesn't take too long but it is an extra set it is an extra step to set up the tripod and get the camera angle going and get the mic set up and everything like that and but I didn't want to make any more excuses so I decided to yeah just turn the camera on and share with you a realistic journal with me session it was I think the video itself was about six minutes and here I am back at the page spread that I started working on. And so I did that doodle there of my junk journal onto the left hand side. And I think I added the headings all sold out and disappointed on a separate day. Uh, that's why it's quite dry, I think. And um, I'm just taking my fine liner. I tend to do this often. I will write out the headings in a brush marker or maybe in this instance I just used some watercolor and a water brush and wrote out the headings. I let that dry and then I like to line it uh, with just a simple mild liner, not mild liner, a uh, fine liner uh, so that the headings are more pronounced. You can see here, I'm trying to film with one hand, so I apologize if it's a little unsteady, but yeah, I'm definitely not within the lines. Um, a lot of the times, the I, I rush this part. It is a very relaxing uh, journal thing to do for me. I like to outline things, and um, but I'm not very meticulous when it comes to that. Uh, the lines are not in place, and I'm always off. Um, out of line or anyways but um, I did that with the fine liner and then I'm just taking a simple highlighter here you can see the pink one and just adding color to the other heading that says no sound I I think it's okay to use standard highlighters or markers or even like the mild liners to uh, add color to your doodles and pages I'm using that same exact highlighter and just outlining the word disappointed. I, <laughs> okay, I don't know if I talked about this, but uh, there was a limited release of a special traveler's notebook. Um, it was the Yudo one, the one with the onsen, the hot springs, and it's the blue traveler's notebook. And it was released, I think it was on the 26th or 25th. It must have been the 25th. And then the next day I decided to go because I, I thought to myself, there's no way they're already sold out. It's just it's been only one day. And there's been nothing on social media saying that it was sold out. Usually they'll post, Traveler's Factory or Traveler's Company will post something on social media that will say that they're sold out. And I didn't see anything like that, so I ended up going with my daughter, which is very rare. I don't really go to these um, busy places with her. Uh, but I decided to go with her um, and we got there, they opened at 12 but we got there at 12.30 and they were already sold out. I was so disappointed <laughs> um, because this special notebook is something that uh, I wanted to keep track of the different onsens that we visit, the different hot springs 
that we visit uh, within Japan. So I was very disappointed that it was not there. Um, yeah, and especially dragging my daughter out there, it was... I mean, of course she was um, a trooper about it, but it's never fun to have to drag your kids through the busy subway system in Tokyo. I'm not, I'm certainly not uh, used to that. Thankfully, one of my friends was able to purchase one for me as uh, she was not uh, getting one for herself. And anyways, so um, at the end of the day, I was disappointed uh, that it was not there uh, when I went to purchase it, but I was able to grab one for myself. My family is really, really into onsen and they really enjoy the onsen very much. I am not, um, I'm, I am starting to slowly uh, becoming more accustomed to the whole idea of going into the onsen. Especially, I think my daughter really enjoys it and it allows us kind of like separate time. Um, my husband with my son and then myself with my daughter and we just kind of have our bonding time, um, especially when we go traveling. I think it's nice to kind of have our separate time uh, just to chat. And so I think it would be a really nice traveler's notebook to keep track of those memories. I'm don't I'm thinking of maybe backing like doing some backtracking and seeing if there's any photos of previous onsens that we visited. Of course, you can't take any photos of the onsen itself um, inside, but I wonder if I search through uh, my previous photos if I can find some. Um, of the previous trips that we've been on. I, I think it would be a lot of fun to take a look back. I don't see myself tackling that project just yet. Maybe when we have some downtime, possibly during the spring break, I think it would be a nice little project for my kids and myself to work on. I say that ambitiously. I, I don't know if that's going to work out, but Anyways, back to the journaling here. I brought back the junk journal that you see off to the side, the fabric junk journal. And I'm just looking at it for reference to see what kind of colors are, um, are there. And I'm doing like a very a quick kind of wash of color. I think if I really wanted to, I will take out, once the watercolor is dry, I will take out some pencil crayons and uh, kind of darken certain spots up and deepen certain colors and I think that part that's also a fun part of the doodles for me is to add dimension and depth to the illustrations or doodles I think sometimes I'm very impatient though and I can't wait for the watercolor to dry and then I'll just leave it um, but I do very much enjoy adding that extra s certain steps um, and for like headings waiting for the watercolor to dry and then lining it with a fine liner I enjoy that step as well it's just a long process I know some people will use um, a heat gun or like a hair dryer to kind of speed up the drying process but I don't have that with me and I'm just yeah, I, I'm not gonna hassle myself in getting it, getting my hair dryer from. Um, yeah. Anyways, so that's what I'm doing here. I'm just adding color to my doodle that I did, and then I'm adding some watercolor to outline the the drawing. I've been doing this often. I've been doing this for several years now. I think where I would doodle or draw, and then I would color it in with watercolor. Let that dry a bit and then outline the drawing with some type of color. Sometimes it's just outlining it with a gray marker, like a brush marker. Sometimes it's outlining it with just pencil crayon and in this instance and a lot of the times I'll just outline it using just some standard water watercolor. Uh, whatever I feel like using uh, is what I'll do. And it's very uh, I'm not too careful. I'll share with you near the end like a close-up of the dried watercolor and you'll see that there's a lot of white space in between and I I just kind of left it purposely there 
so that um, not everything is filled in with watercolor. And I kind of like that messy, sketchy look of it. It, um, it really shows that I'm very impatient and I just kind of want to wa wash through it and yeah, I just want to wash my brush through it and not be too careful. And that's the whole charm of it. I think some days I'm a lot more careful and some days I just really, it doesn't, um, yeah, it, it usually doesn't really bother me. And so I think that's pretty much it for this journal spread. You'll see here I'm going to use my um, brush pen to demonstrate all these little like white spaces that you see. It's not fully filled in, like the edges aren't fully filled in and I just really like that watercolor technique, not technique, but the watercolor effect that it gives. Um, you can see even the doodle itself is very, very messy and just very simple. And But it gives it a really nice kind of sketchy look and very much like handmade or hand-drawn look. I'm, I don't usually go for like the realistic drawings because I know that I can't achieve that. I mean, I shouldn't say that to myself. I could probably achieve something um, if I'd put the time and effort into it, but for me at this point, I just really enjoy this look of the messy, sketchy type of journaling. And so that's it for this journal spread. I hope you enjoyed this sh session. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here and I'll see you soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.